All right, I just got a package in the mail, and it is the Twin Quad Frames Gemini 2.5 inch. This frame is 135 millimeters, motor to motor. It's specifically designed for 2.5 inch props with a semi-stretch configuration, um, and it's made to actually house a, a Runcam Micro, uh, which I'm excited about because a lot of these small builds sometimes take really small, crappy cameras, and I don't like that. So let's see what comes in the box. So we've got the frame itself, We've got these little arm guards, which I think is pretty awesome because I typically will put my motor on top of the frame, uh, or on top of the, the part, and then use it as kind of a soft mounting. The standoffs, looks like four, four standoffs. Um, this guy, which I think hooks over the back standoffs and provides you a place to screw in your SMA connector uh, for your uh, FPV antenna. Um, what else, top plate. Looks like these little side plates, which I'm not going to use because it also ships with these 3D printed parts. So these will actually slide over the front standoffs and the run cam uh, micro will mount to those. Um, and then of course the rest of your hardware. Uh, the components I'm going to use, because this is this frame actually takes, um, it's a 20 by 20 uh, hole pattern, but it's also M2 screws. So that's going to limit which components you're going to be able to use. Uh, you know, M2 is going to be a little bit lighter, uh, but it's also um, you know not as durable. The flight controller stack and the uh, also held the top FPV pod. I would worry about that, but because it's just going to be holding uh, my four in one and my flight controller, uh, I think M2 is going to be great a great lightweight solution. One thing I love about this frame is that it's not a three inch frame that can take 2.5 inch props, but it's specifically designed for 2.5 inch props. You know, there's there's not a lot of uh, play you know between the props and the frame and you're gonna end up with just a really tight design uh, that's very lightweight you know with wonder upon us uh, now um, there's gonna be a lot of 2.5 inch spec racing going on and I think this is gonna be a great 2.5 inch spec racing frame the components that I'm going to use I'm going to go with the uh, 20 by 20 m2 4-in-1 which is the SPC maker 10 amp 4-in-1 from buddy RC and I'm gonna pair that with the SPC maker flight controller uh, I chose these because they're both M2, they're both from Buddy RC, so I can get them right down the road, which is great. And the, the flight controller is the Omnibus uh, flight controller, so it's got built-in Betaflight OSD, and it's just a, a good, reliable flight controller that I've used a lot in the past and have, have, have not had problems with. I'm going to be going with the, the SPC Maker 1104 7500 kV motors. Uh, these things are great for 2.5 inch props. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be using. All right, I'm also going to be using the Runcam uh, Micro 2.1, and that will mount uh, there on the front with 3D printed parts. Uh, for the VTX, I'm not really sure yet. I'll probably just go with some uh, tiny little cheap VTX, VTX 03 or something of the likes. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking a piece of electrical tape and sticking it to the top of the arm, and then I'm using a tool to punch out the holes for the center of the motor and for the motor screws. And what that does is it provides a small layer of vibration dampening between the motor and the carbon fiber plate. And this helps when your motors um, are getting older and you have vibrations and it keeps them from getting back to the flight controller. So there you go. So one piece of tape and if you spin hard with the, uh, with the tool inside of that hole, the carbon fiber uh, is sharp enough to cut the, the, the tape and give you a nice clean uh, cut through it. With this center hole, your biggest concern is that the tape will touch the C-clip on the bottom of the motor and keep it from spinning freely. It's something you don't want. So I take more care on the center hole and then on the uh, on the screw holes, I'll just, just punch them out quickly. All right, so we got all of the motors on. I just did two screws for now. I'll circle back when I'm done to add the rest. All right, got the motors attached and the uh, motor wires soldered to the 4-in-1 ESC. I ran the battery leads out through the small hole in the back and then off to the side. I'm thinking I might end up zip tying these through the loop here in the frame uh, and then putting an XT30 connector on it. Um, I'm not sure if that's how I'm going to do it yet. I'm, I'm going to wait till I'm completely done um, and then get a battery hooked up and see what it feels like. Uh, I may end up pulling them back out and just running them you know, through the side here, but we'll see. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave them through there so they stay out of the way, and uh, I'm going to move on to the flight controller. Fortunately, because I went with both SPC Maker products, uh, I could just use the ribbon 
to uh, bridge up to the flight controller, and that's going to save me a little bit of soldering, uh, at least for the motor wires, um, or the motor, si or the, I'm sorry, the ESC signal wires. So, um, all right, I'm going to move on to the flight controller. All right, here's the final build. I've got the run cam micro on the front here, the four and one on the bottom. I did some rubber O-rings uh, for vibration dampening here in the middle, and then the flight controller on top. Um, I just went with three standoffs to kind of hold that down and then I went with the VTX-03 on top uh, with the antenna kind of just pushing out the back here. I'll still be able to get to the channel selector uh, once it's on. It's, the VTX is kind of just wedged in between the standoffs and when the top plate goes on it'll hold it in place. And then I mounted my receiver here with some double sided tape just to the back of the frame and ran the antenna out the back. On the bottom, I'm not using a normal battery strap, I'm just going with a piece of velcro and then some foam pads to hold that battery in place. And like I said, I ran the battery connector out the bottom and I'll probably just end up zip tying it here or just uh, Velcroing it down along with the battery once it's done. But that's it, final build. All right, the final lay-in for the twin quad frames Gemini is 79 grams. And with the 450 uh, milliamp, uh, three cell that I'm gonna run it on probably we're looking at around 121 grams the battery I ended up running with is the 450 uh, milliamp 2s uh, the, kind of the long skinny ones from tattoo that they sell at buddy RC um, I ended up top mounting the battery uh, I saw some pictures of some other people doing it um, on Facebook and I thought man that's probably the way to run this and I really like the way it felt the quad was really balanced and just felt agile and snappy even on 2s you know outside where it was windy uh, I had no problem scooting through the yard and I think indoors this thing will be a beast on 2s all right so here I'm running the long skinny tattoo 3s battery as you can see, it's got a way more punch than it did on the 2S. It's still got that nice balanced feel of a top mounted battery, but it's just way more fun to fly, especially outdoors. I think that if you're looking for a frame designed specifically for 2.5 inch props with a top mounted battery and that elongated traditional quad design body, look no further than the 2.5 inch Gemini from Twin Quad Frames.